So science can provide us the means for living. Means for living means we can have transportation by which food supply can be brought uh, from one part of foods can be brought from one part of the world to another. We can have food, clothing, shelter, and so many of the other needs of our life we can be provided for. And to some extent, this COVID pandemic has revealed that for each one of us, the 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 means for living, we we were able to stay live digitally. We have this class digitally. So technology can provide us many resources for living. However, we human beings. also gitab the provides us the meaning for living now if you ask uh, siri what is the meaning of life that it gives all kinds of funny answers because that is a question which is very difficult to answer man mm. our friend is in california and he he is in the mental health care profession and he told me that in this pandemic there there's been a lot of focus on the covid itself and how it is going to take a toll and how to manage balance the lives and the livelihoods uh, that whole dilemma that the whole world is facing he said what has been overlooked is the mental health he he said in the last 3 months and this has been he's been we are talking regularly last 3 months i have received more emergency calls for help than what i have received in the last 20 years of my life why because because of the shutdown of life normal life as we know it because of covid many of the distractions we had we, we no longer have them and then we start asking ourselves now what is the actual meaning of life what am i here for is it that one you know one creature that is utterly invisible to us can bring my whole life to a standstill what is life all about so we need meaning in life as much as we need the means of life so in fact for many people who end up ending their lives who commit suicide of course now the politically term correct, correct correct usage is not to commit suicide it is to die by suicide that means they treat suicide not as an act committed by oneself it's like suicide is a disease and you get infected by the disease and you die now that's a, that's a sensitive but tragic way of uh, phrasing the things the point is most people commit suicide not because they are starving yes some people do in utter emergencies but far more people commit suicides because they feel their life has no meaning or whatever they thought was the meaning of life was taken away from them was thwarted from them so is there an enduring meaning for life which can keep keep us keep us moving forever no we don't we don't really fear suffering suffering comes upon everyone in life but what we really fear is meaningless suffering when there's a war the soldiers and even young people from the country will voluntarily go to the battlefield to fight and they know there'll be depri- deprivation over there there'll be privation over there there may be even destruction death over there so they choose all that suffering because it is meaningful that yes i am doing all this for my country so as much as the body needs food that much the human head and heart need meaning and with meaning we can even accept suffering and without meaning even pleasure becomes boring when pleasure becomes boring most of us may think that i want to enjoy life if i ask you if we're face to face you know how many of you like comedies say who doesn't like comedy do we like to who likes to like a good laugh everybody does but if i told you from tomorrow onwards you have no family obligations no financial obligation no social obligations from tomorrow morning to night for the rest of your life you do nothing except watch comedies you might do it for a half an hour an hour if you're very frustrated with things in life maybe for a few days but after some time you you get fed up of comedies you want to do something meaningful in life it's all just meaningless laughter so with meaning even pain becomes acceptable without meaning even pleasure becomes unacceptable so we need meaning in life and unfortunately science itself doesn't tell us what is the meaning of life 
In fact, the way science reveals the world is, you know, we are just lucky accidents in this cosmos and we are here flapping around for some time and then we die. So uh, if we take not a scientific worldview, but a scientistic worldview, scientism is different from science. Scientism is the ideology. Science is the methodology. Scientism is the ideology which claims that science is omnipotent, sorry, is omniscient, that science knows everything. That all the questions that are worth asking are answered by science. And if any question is not answered by science, then that question is not worth asking. So scientism significantly has no scientific proof. Scientism itself is unscientific. But the point is, science cannot tell us what is the meaning of life. And Albert Einstein famously said that, you know, we can have, <clears throat> we can talk about the ethical foundations of science. Is science being used ethically? Is science being used meaningfully? But he says, we can't talk about the scientific foundation of ethics. Because ethics, what makes like meaningful? What is moral? What is right? What is wrong? This is something science cannot tell us. So again, again, the point is not to devalue science. The point is to recognize that we humans need knowledge of another kind. To quote Einstein again, he said, the sciences, the arts, and the religions, they are all trees. Are they all fruits of the same tree of human knowledge? So now, when you say this is about scientism, you know, how dare you believe in something that cannot be measured, analyzed, or peer reviewed? Now, well, what about my mother's love? Does your mother love you? Well, if I ask this question in America, it's considered to be an unpleasant question to ask because there are some people whose mothers have abandoned them and they grow up in maybe child in children care services or whatever. But for most of us, we have experienced our mother's love. In fact, if our mother had not loved us, we would not have survived our infancy. So it is real. But how can we measure it? How can you quantify it? How can we scientifically prove our mother's love? Is there an experiment by which you can say that my mother loves me? No, the mother's love is real. It is what sustains our life and yet it cannot be scientifically proven. So there is much more to life than what science can provide us. You know, science can provide us entertainment. We can get incredible amount of titillation through entertainment. But Gita can provide us enlightenment. Now, what is it? that we want to do beyond just stimulating our senses. How can we live a meaningful life? So what we live with is important, but what we live for is far more important. Live with is the resources, is the means. Live for is the purpose, the meaning. So science can provide us the means for living. The Gita can provide us the meaning for living. What we And what we live for is far more important than what we live with. Both are important, no doubt. So with this background, as I said, the simple way is science can provide us a great car, but you cannot tell us where to go with that car. It is we who decide. And for deciding that, we, we will be helped if we have some information, some guidance. 